Welcome. Glad that you hung out. We're going to go to God in, some, uh, in his word here. I, the thing I passed out to you, I wanted to just start and let you know that um, we're joining uh, with actually about now 20 churches. Um, I think they said that it's, uh, it's in the thousands of people who are going to be joining us. Anyway, I want to invite you uh, also to join on the three different days. So this coming week, Monday, August 3rd, fasting. Now, fasting typically is food, but understanding that some have uh, health challenges or other things that prevent them from fasting food. So if you have a health issue, I strongly encourage you not to fast food unless the Lord himself has told you. Don't do it because Pastor Jeff said it. Do it uh, only as God prompts you. However, for those of you who can do that, but you can fast a lot of things. You can fast TV. You can fast, somebody said coffee. So uh, that, that might be a big thing, you know. I mean, somebody's got to live with you when you do that. Right? <laughs> so, but, you know, you know, you might fast uh, social media, for example. Or you might fast whatever. The idea is, is that you give up something. And during that time that you normally would be spending on doing whatever that is, you'd be focused on something um, spiritual or God. And so... Um, this was actually originated uh, in a church in Ohio with people I'm in relationship with, uh, and uh, one of the persons is actually on my board for our ministry we do outside of here. And anyway, you know, there's power in prayer, and there's power when we come together as a body. So what we want to do is August 3rd, Monday, uh, fast something if you can, even if it's a one meal or something, uh, whatever that is, but we're fasting specifically against certain things. The Bible's very clear is that Jesus was with the disciples. There was a person who was had a demon, and the disciples had regularly cast demons out of people. And uh, they couldn't cast the demon out of this, this person. And uh, they went to Jesus, who came up and dealt with it, like, instantly. And they said, what is going on? And Jesus said to them, this kind, this demon that this person had, only comes out by prayer and fasting. And so there's an element of intensity that happens in the spiritual realm when we fast. So I'd encourage you to try to give up something just tomorrow for, for some period of time even. And we're going against this stupid pandemic, right? This COVID thing that's altered our lives. It's, I mean, it's altering where we're at right now. I mean, praise God for Keith and Maxine uh, Lovin. Uh, if you can visit their facility when, I mean, they're not open today and they're letting us use it. But I'm just telling you, their hearts are just so pure. Uh, yes. They're not charging us money yes. uh, to, to use this space. Uh, you know, and you can see it's a little small for us. So you should see the antics this one does when she's got more space. It's kind of scary, actually. And, uh, but uh, there's costumes, there's all kinds of stuff. But we're coming against this COVID thing that's got us pinned in places. But thank God for Keith and Maxine. I'd encourage you to come and visit them. But we're also fasting against any spirit of division, racism, pride, and the spirit of fear. We talk about that a lot here uh, in ABC. On August 5th, Wednesday, we're going to have a day of prayer. Um, now, understanding many of us have got jobs and we're working or whatever, but we're trying to, to take a little pause throughout the day. And, you know, at break time, at whatever time you can, they're recommending the group that's kind of sponsoring this is a... Uh, if you can, every three hours, take a time and just take a moment and pray. And this is what we're praying about in unity, August 5th, to be in one accord. You know, if we can kind of align with people who all believe in Jesus and coming against the, have the same enemy. You know, oftentimes we turn against each other, but we need to turn against the one who's really the enemy. So we want to do that. We want to walk in power, love, and a sound mind. That comes right from the scripture that says, God did not give you a spirit of fear, but this is what he did power, love, and a sound mind. We want to pray for that. To be a Christian, you know, when you walk in this life and you exit out those doors, I guarantee you, you know, before the end of the day, you're going to be confronted with a situation that can cause you to have some kind of response. And we can choose which way we're going to respond, right? And, but sometimes it's, <laughs> it's hard, and sometimes our responses might not be appropriate. But if we can just pray, that we'll say, you know what, let me be Christ-like. Let me be the light. Let me be the one that brings... Uh, part of the answer, part of the solution instead of part of the problem. Healing our nation and the needs of, of our congregation. So right now, just so you know, you can join us in prayer, praying for a bigger space. We love to, to, we're praying and we're believing for actually a permanent space that could be our space. 
And guess what? We have no means to do that. <laughs> like zero means to do that. But guess who, who does, right? God does. So we want to pray for that. And then finally, Friday, August 7th is a day of praise. You know, we should have a habit of praising God. Even when we're walking through a situation, um, a lot, oftentimes in a battle, God would send out the choir members to sing praises. And sometimes the enemy would like turn on themselves, right? And they didn't even have to fight the war just because they praised him. God says in his word that he inhabits. That means he's present when we pray. So that's why Tracy's going to usher in the presence of the Lord when, when we uh, sing in just a moment. But we want to praise him for unity in the, in the global church. We want to praise him for peace in our nation. Sometimes you praise him for things that aren't happening. Yeah, that's right. We're praising him by faith, right? To say, this is what we want, and we want these things. Healing for one another, acceptance of one another, reconciliation in our nation, and the devil's plan failing. <laughs> I like that one, so that we can have victory. And then answers to our prayers. Uh, we want to do that. So that's what that sheet is for. Just as a reminder, I'd encourage you to, to, uh, to join with us and, and do that. Uh, I'm reminding me today of the fact that part of the mission of AEC, part of the mission statement, is to build a community of overcomers. So today I want us really to position and have our minds in a place as we enter into worship. Tracy, go ahead and get ready. As we enter into worship, I really want us to think about I am an overcomer. You in your mind, I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer. All the stuff that was thrown all over here, it's a, we don't talk. I, mean, I always want to talk more, but we really don't get a chance to talk. We're both very busy. But she started talking about foundation today. And my title of my message is A Sure Foundation. It's just amazing what happens, right? And what we want to talk about today is just that. And that foundation that we're going to talk about, that you've been learning about in ADC, that is a firm foundation. The Bible, the Scripture is a firm foundation that we have and that, that will enable us to be overcomers. That's really what this is all about. We want to, and guess what? Everyone in the room needs to be overcomer, right? I need to overcome some things right now today. I need to overcome. Tracy needs to overcome. Valerie needs to overcome. We all need to do that. So I want to just posture our minds and, and think, you know what? I am an overcomer. I'm not just saying it to, to try to just speak out something, but I am saying it because I want my brain to be conditioned to say, whatever happens to me, it's not going to defeat me. I might feel like I get hit or I might have a challenge. That's, that's not it. Yeah, that's true. But I'm going to overcome. And I really just want us to focus as we enter into worship. Go ahead and start. Um, I want to just enter into this place of knowing that through God, we can overcome. We can overcome. And we will have this uh, foundation we're going to talk about today. So I'm super excited. Go ahead, Tracy. Lead us. Uh, let me pray first. Just keep playing. Lord, I thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for the wonder of what you are, who you are, and how you love us. Lord, I thank you that you postured us to have a firm foundation. Lord God, that the labels that are put on us and those that we put on ourselves, Lord God, that are not of you, Lord, that we can cast those aside, we can throw them down. But then, Lord, we can look forward to you and you can order our steps that we will plant our feet on solid ground. Lord God, and we will overcome. Lord, that we do have a sure foundation. And Lord, that you have given us a way. Sometimes when there seems to be no way, that you are the way maker yes. for us, Lord God. Yeah. And that we can walk where you've already trod because you've cleared the path for us. So, Father, I just thank you today that we overcome. We are overcomers in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, thank you so much. And thank you for the firm foundation that you are. Now, touch everyone here. Give them ears to hear, Lord God, that which you have from your word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 All right. Hallelujah. Stand up if you can. Before I sing this, I want to read the words to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Glory. So here are the words for this song. They're um, kind of really fitting for what we're going through in this world. When the threat of darkness has come breaking in and the force of fear blows like a violent wind, when confusion strikes and clouds of chaos hit, I know that my heart cannot be held by circumstance, for my eyes are locked on the God who sees the end. So when this world around me cries out, who can stand? I know, for I will not be moved, for my feet are planted in you. 
a firm foundation, my solid rock. You can't be shaken, you won't be stopped. You hold me fast, you never leave. You are the hope to which I cling, a firm foundation. You are my rock, you are my God. Even when the mountains bow to rising waves, no, the sea of doubt will never make me sway. Yes, I will rejoice within the current's rage, singing, oh, you hold me. You're holding me steady. If floods, I'm going to be ready. I am sealed in you. You're holding me. You're holding me steady. In the break of every levee, I'm sealed in you. My firm foundation. Jesus is our firm foundation. Let's sing this to him. Now, I'm not going to. I'm not going to try to make this sound like it's any song to sing. It's, it's not. I'm sorry. But Jeff found this, and its words are so fitting. When the threat of darkness has no break in, and the force of fear must lie to violent things, when the fear just rises out of pain, I sit. This time I need some clapping. We're gonna get involved. Okay. When the threat of darkness has to in. All right. Okay. Uh, 
I had some very embarrassing things happen when singing. This is nothing. But this is kind of the point of what Valerie's been saying. When things happen that are not the way you want them, they're not the way you're planned. I've worked on this song a ton in between painting our house, getting ready to sell. I'm covering the paint. And I'm tired, but I worked and worked and worked, and I messed it up anyway. Oh, wow. So what? We sang, we thought it, we got it in our heads. He's our firm foundation. That's right. We're not going to sweat the small stuff. That's right. Yes. 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 Don't sweat. That's right. <laughs> so praise God. So we're talking today about a sure foundation. That's what we're talking about. You know, that foundation is, in this song, was talking about, you know what? Storms come at me. Things come at me. I'm going to be standing firm. I'm going to stand right. firm. What I want to do is take the next step about what happens afterwards. So y'all talk about, have, 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 some of you may or may not seen this. Many of you have, that in the AEC class, we use this hula hoop. And we talk about when things happen in our life where fear consumes us, those labels get put on us, all the things that happen uh, in our lives, we all of a sudden get ourselves in a position where we retreat and we put this wall around us. Valerie sometimes will bring these uh, bricks and blocks and stack them around, right, and, and do that thing. And why do we do that? Why do we, why do, we do this? We resurrect these walls all around us and are like, uh-uh. Isn't it because it, we think that we can protect ourselves? We think that we can be safe. We think that if I'm here and I don't really let anybody see who I really am, but I develop this thing that we call an AEC fake self, that that somehow is safe. That, that somehow is okay. That, that somehow is all right. Let me tell you what the Bible calls that stuff. It calls it like bondage. It calls it being in prison. It's called uh, being in captivity. It talks about a yoke being placed upon you that can just take you and lower your head. You know what a yoke is? The yoke is the thing that they stretch across cattle, oftentimes, or some kind of animal that's going to grind out the mill, right? But what it, do you know what that yoke actually does? If you notice, the animal's head normally is up here, but the yoke actually forces it to go down, it forces it just to look. So all it's going to do, it's not going to be distracted by anything else. It's just going to be consumed by this thing that's on it, and I'm going to walk around in this circle. What you do, what we do, when we get ourselves in a position because we've been hurt, because we've had trouble, because we've had anxiety, because we had fear, lashed out in anger, whatever those things that have driven us, we put ourselves in this thing, and it's a place of captivity. And it's not the place that God wants you to be. But I want to talk to you today about what we need to do when we step out of this thing. When we go and we're saying, you know what, I don't, I don't want to be inside that anymore. But here's the thing, is that is a scary place. It, it's a scary place to say, because you get comfortable with your, your surroundings that you build up. And so what happens is, is that the enemy, do you think is going to just give up when you decide you're going to step out of this boundary? No, he's going to do whatever he can. What's he going to try to do? He's going to try to make you sink. Like, it's quick saying, you put your first step in, and all of a sudden you start sinking down. It's like, no, 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 I'm back. I'm getting back in, because that's not safe. Or I, my first step out is a slip, and I fall, and it's like, no way, I'm getting back in. Or I get out, and all of a sudden, it doesn't look like I, I know what, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's happening right now, what's going on, and all of a sudden, that fear starts to take over me. Somebody comes up to me and says something about, what are you doing? That's not who you are. And you're like, you're right, that's not. And I step back in to this place, and I get back into this captivity, this bondage that we exist in. So what do we need to do? We need to make sure when we step out <clears throat> that it's stepping on solid ground, that it's stepping on firm foundation, stepping on something that I can have confidence in so I can say, I'm not going to just take one step, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come all the way out. And you know what? Here's what we wrestle with. Here's what I wrestle with is that I take a step and then I want to see what's a mile down the road. I want to see what's happening in my future. And I'm like, God, show me, show me. And it's not that God's trying to keep things secret to you, but it's a daily walk and it's steps of faith and you take one step at a time. And so you get there and you take another step and you take another step and you take another step as he leads. And here's the thing. If he showed you the vision of what it was going to look like in the end, just me, I'll just speak for myself, I would mess it up. <laughs> right? Because I would say, oh, if that's the way that I need to go over here. And, and he's like, no, 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 no. No, I stay on this path. Stay on this place. So what I want to talk to you about today 
is that God doesn't desire us to live in that bondage. God doesn't want us to live in this place where we're fake. He wants us real because he created us. He has a purpose. He has called you for something. He doesn't want you to bear that kind of a load. He wants you to walk and he wants you to step out. He doesn't want you to hide behind fake self. He doesn't want you to be isolated. God doesn't like this. It's not like he's happy about the pandemic and the fact that we can't gather the way we want and the way we, we want uh, to be able to even worship him. He wants us to be free. Sure. And so today I want to talk about the steps of faith, breaking free, how we're going to exit this place and walk into a place but that we can have confidence in. That when we step out, it's not that challenges won't happen, they will. But when we, we walk, we can have confidence that we know we're on solid ground and a firm foundation. Let's move on. So this is a little picture. I like it of a cornerstone, right? So the cornerstone here is the cross, right? Mm -hmm. And a cornerstone, does everyone know what that is? So just, just at a high level, we're talking about a sure foundation and what it requires is a cornerstone. And that cornerstone is the starting point of a building. It's where you, it's the first stone that's set, usually on the corner. And that stone is what we're going to build everything else on. And that stone, if it's on solid ground, if that stone is, is fixed and permanent, it will also set the course. You know, that when you lay bricks, it's called a course of bricks. If the cornerstone isn't solid and isn't stable, the whole thing is going to be a mess. It's that first step that needs to be right. And so in this case, what does the Bible say? Isaiah 21, 8, 8, 28, 16 says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, and the one who relies on it will never panic. So when we're talking about this, how many of us in this life, in this pandemic, what we're going through right now, we panic and we get right back in? Because then somehow this feels safe. But really, we're fooling ourselves. There's not safety in the earth. It feels like we can control it, and so we think it may be safe, but really the reality is that's not how God wants us to walk. That's not how God wants us to move. So a sure foundation, first of all, very important, begins with the cornerstone. This cornerstone is the first stone. It's the positioning stone. It's the one that also carries all of the load. The whole load of the building is on the cornerstone. Here's what happens. If we try to carry our own load, if we try to carry the weight of our situation and circumstance, we will crumble. Mm -hmm. right. And we do crumble. And then we make mistakes. And then we get in trouble. And we do stuff we shouldn't do. Because we're just trying to fight through and find a way. But if we can say, no, you know what? I, I yield that to God. I surrender that to God. Give that to him. I put my basis on the cornerstone. The steps of faith need to be founded on that. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 through 22, we're going to talk about who is the cornerstone. And of course, you guys know it's Jesus. Jesus is who they're referring to. This is a prophet Isaiah. It's a messianic prophet, meaning he's speaking forward about who Jesus is. And that's what he's talking about when he says this tested stone, precious stone, a cornerstone, a sure foundation. He's talking about Jesus. And so Jesus, in Ephesians 2, 19 through 22, says that Jesus is the cornerstone, that he is the building block that joins everything together. He's trying to draw all of us together. If we can all come together, some of the things we're going to pray about is that togetherness, that, that unity. And you know, the reality is, is that we are a temple. The Bible uses all kinds of building illustrations. And this is a building where we're talking about Jesus needs to be the cornerstone. So when we're talking about our situation and we're walking around and we've been hurt and we've been damaged. We're living inside of here. For us to step out, the first thing we need to know is what am I stepping onto? And if you have a relationship with Christ and you have God in the center of your life, when you step out, you can know that you have a cornerstone that it's not going to slip. It's not going to be muddy. It's not going to be quicksand. You're going to step out. and It's going to be solid. Okay, so that's the first step. Is for us to step out of that, we need that we can and we will have confidence if we can base that on the cornerstone, on the solid rock. You know, have you heard the old hymn? Upon this solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. That's exactly what we're talking about. 
<laughs> What's the kid song, Tracy? <laughs> you know, the rains came down and, and the, the floods came up. up. You know, the wise man built his house on the rock. The wise man <laughs> built his house upon the rock. I can't sing at all, but I'm going to do anyway. Oh, no. so, and the rains of. What? The wise man <laughs> built his house upon the rock. And the still, what happens? The rains come, the storms come, the floods come, except the result's different. Woo. That's, our, that's our second point. <laughs> so a sure foundation is based on the cornerstone, but then as we build our lives, as we're saying about what am I going to, what's my new label? What are, you know, I threw all the old things out, now I'm stepping out. We talked last week about filling up when you empty out your bat, your your bucket of stuff, your trash of labels, and now all of a sudden you got to fill something up. You need to fill it up with the good things. We talked about all of that, but today I'm saying that as you fill it up, as you're, it's like you're laying bricks. Yes. I'm laying a brick. Yes. I'm laying a brick. I'm laying a brick. And why are you doing that? You're not laying some chintzy building, right? It's like the three little pigs. I'm not building uh, it on a straw. <laughs> I'm building a lot of bricks. <laughs> Got all these nursery rhyme references today. It's awesome. You can tell I spent time with grandkids yesterday. <laughs> but we have to place our bricks on the cornerstone. If we place our bricks on the sand, if we place our bricks somewhere else that isn't founded in God's word, and his word is what? Truth. Right. His word is truth. If we don't base it on truth, then it's not going to stand up. Notice this in that little song, you know, it doesn't matter... If you built your house on brick, uh, on the rocks or if you build it on the sand, the storms still come. Mm -hmm. Storms are coming. Right. Pandemic's not just uh, forgetting about people who are Christians. Yeah. You know, I, I, I know several <laughs> who got it, have had it. You know, praise God, they're making it through it. So I want to read uh, out of Matthew. And we're going to verse jump to uh, Matthew chapter 7, 24 through 27. Hallelujah. Where are you going to build your house? Where are you going to build your foundation that you take your step? I just encourage you. Take it. Take it in the right way. Okay, Matthew 7, 24 through 27 says this. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, this is Jesus talking. Everyone who hears these words of mine puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had a foundation on the rock. That's right. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Let's look at what happens if you don't. But everyone, Jesus still talking, who hears these words and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on this sand. Mm -hmm. Ah, Amen. the rain comes. The streams rise, the winds blow, and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. The storms are coming, regardless of where we build our house. What we don't want to do is crash, and then when we crash, we, we go and we think this is our lifeboat. When the storms come and it's been washed away, it's like, Here, here's, our, here's our thing. Instead, if we can build ourselves and our thing on a foundation, what happens is that all of a sudden we can stand firm like the song Tracy sang. I won't be moved. I will not be moved. It'll come, but I'm not going to be moved because I'm standing on something solid. Right. I'm standing on something secure. I'm standing on something that isn't going to be easily moved. And I'm going to be firm. I'm going to be firm on that. What else happens is that, you know what? If I then surround it, if you think about a building, if you think about the cornerstone being God himself, and, that, and then we're building this brick. But also, part of those bricks are the people you're sitting next to. It's your community. So are the people you're sitting next to, are they going to be like-minded? Are they going to build their house on the cornerstone? Or are they going to build it on something else? So when the storm comes, are they going to tell you, have you ever had somebody who's a good friend give you terrible advice? Oh, you know what? I did, you, when we were first married, I had, I had several people who were good friends. I thought, I thought leave her. Why do you want to be with her? Why, what? She's tricked you. 
So, well, if she tricked me, she tricked me back in 1984. So we've been hanging together for a long time. And I can tell you, there was no trick. It's just all tree. Oh. 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 Yeah. Oh. 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 A house built on anything else is gonna it's gonna fall. And what happens when we fall? There's an author who I like, his name is John Bevere. He wrote a book called The Bait of Satan. He said that, that, that Satan tries to trick you and he puts you into this, this cyclical trap where you're enticed or attracted to something that you think is gonna fill a void in your life. Something that isn't the cornerstone. It's something else you're putting where the cornerstone should be. And, and you put it in your life, and maybe for a moment, it's like gratification. I, it's like, wow, oh, this is awesome. And you can think about all kinds of things that can be. It can be money. It can be sex. It can be a relationship. It can be whatever. But pretty soon, that fades away because a storm comes, and that crumbles around you. And then all of a sudden, I'm looking for something else. And that's the cycle that he says. Satan puts this bait out in front of you that's enticing, attractive to the eyes and says, man, I'd like to do that. I'd like to try that. But in your heart and in the still small voice in your ear you hear that says, don't go there. Don't do that. That's wrong. But still we shun that voice and we say, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Because you know what? It, it looks like it's going to be good. It looks like it's going to feel good. It's going to feel right. But I'm telling you, friends, if you don't have the foundation on the cornerstone, on Jesus himself, on God's word, that's going to just fail you. Even if it's a person, it will fail you. We are to have relationships, but our, our very premise, our foundation needs to be based on God. That needs to be based on this word. Everything else is going to be that sinking sand. And you know what? How many of you know that the crash isn't, an, isn't just a little slip and like, oh, I skid my knee. Right? It's, it's a devastating, it's trying to take you out. Yeah. The Bible says, I say this all the time, the Bible says the enemy comes to seek you out, to kill you and destroy you. The intention of your crash is not just to get a bruise, it's to take you out. And so we, this is so serious that we need to make sure that we're saying, my foundation is right. Right. When you're talking about saying, you know what, I pick up that word, you know, whatever word that was that, that, that Valerie gave you, you know, sometimes I don't think that's by accident, the word she handed you. You should think about that this week. What word did she give you that was positive? Think about that. Those are foundational things. You know what, all those words, those, all those words are founded on scriptural principles. You know what word she gave me? Just. So I'm thinking in my head, okay, God says, you know, all these things about the just, the righteous, the holy, and all that kind of stuff. So you know what I'm going to do when I go home? I'm going to study that. Because I don't think it's by accident that she handed me that. It was a random thing, but I'm just telling you that you take whatever happens in your life and you filter it through this, and then it becomes foundational. You also should test it. So if I say something, you're like, ooh, Pastor Jeff, that seems off to me. Prove it here. This is the solid thing. I can make a mistake. This does not. This is truth. And the truth will set you free. The truth will take you from a place of bondage, captivity, yoke being heavy. The truth will allow you to say, no, that's solid. I can step there. That's solid. I can go there. That's right. We can make that happen. Look at this picture. Oh, no. Yeehaw! <laughs> <laughs> so, fundamentally, a sure foundation is based on God, on Jesus, the cornerstone, on the word of God. That's where we need to be. Then it's a walk of faith. We're in this place. We're all, we've all been there. Some of us are there now. And it's like, I, need to, I know I need to move out. I know this is not who I'm supposed to be. I know this is fake. I want to be real. Okay, I've, I've studied this word, I've prayed about it, I've got these principles that Miss Valerie's been giving me, I, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm basing my walk on God, I, I'm feeling good about stepping out, now it's time to move, it's time to take the step out. And so what I want to do is encourage you, Psalm 18, verses 30 through 36, it, I'm not going to read it, but 
it talks about all these things I'm going to tell you. God's way is perfect. Right. There's no error in what God has for you and the direction he's going to take you. So what about when I'm here, if I have it on the foundation, and I know God's saying, you can do this, you can step out. God's a great encourager. He's putting people around you who's encouraging you. And it's like, it's okay. I know when I step out, if I'm in tune with what God's telling me and what God is leading me, I know that it's safe because it's perfect. Here's a, here's a nugget. Perfect doesn't always look perfect. Perfect many times looks not perfect. So I'm a bigger guy. But I love the outdoors. I love going hiking, and I love walking through streams and all that kind of stuff. But I found now in this stature, at this stage of my life, that there's things I wouldn't have thought anything about stepping across, stepping into right now. And now I'm like, whoa. Oh, you know, I'm not sure. I should have brought the video of Tracy. So Tracy, while she was in Ohio, she went to this campground. And when she was little, that's where her family had their best times in a campground setting. And there was a big spool that has the wire on it, the gigantic wooden ones. And so she, as a kid, used to get in trouble from her grandma because she would hop on there because she's Andre, and she would like you know, roll her feet like she's a log roller. So at 50, whatever, closer to 60, she hopped on that and sent a video to all the kids and who are saying, you're crazy, you're nuts. But the illustration I want to make is, you know, sometimes God's going to call you to do something that looks kind of like, what? If he's told you to do it, there's perfection in that. And he'll keep you safe. So when you're watching that step, we don't need to have analysis paralysis and say, uh, here's my, this is me. This is my guilt. God will give me a little voice. You know, when you ever have heard something, you're like, I know God's telling me I should do that. I really should do that. I know I should do that. And then here's me. I think I'm stupid. I think I've heard. I'm, I'm hearing voices. I'm just not. There's no way that God told me to do. And I'll talk for an hour about that. It's not God. And God's just like waiting patiently on me saying, knucklehead, hey, it's me. I know it looks like you can't do it, but guess what? If you could do it on your own, then you don't need me. I'm going to allow you to do things that you think you can't do. God's way is perfect. His way is flawless. Right. If we follow him, if we get engaged with him, it's not that we won't make mistakes, but if we follow his path, it'll work ultimately to our good. It's flawless. This word in Psalms 18 says that God shields all of those who take refuge. So even though it looks like there's danger all around me, I love that song. It may seem like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. I'm surrounded by him. I'm surrounded by God. He is with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. If we can look at that and say, he is my shield. It's not that he's going to have you walk through an area that isn't dangerous or isn't threatening or doesn't have some element of fear. But what he's going to do is say, watch what I can do if you stay connected to me and my foundation. In your walk, in your path, I'm going to show you you can overcome here. That's right. You can overcome anger. You can overcome rejection. You can overcome those things because I'm going to lead you. And I'm going to take you through those places. I'm going to be your shield. I'm going to be your rock. You know, he's going to be that hard place that says, you know what? What's happening with him? It says God doesn't change ever. Yesterday, today, forevermore. He stays consistent. He's dependable. He can count, we can count on him. He's our strength. You know when he's our greatest strength is when we are at our greatest weakness. That's right. When we are at the place where it's like, I'm at my wit's end. I'm at my physical strength's end. My body is, you know, just rejecting things. And, you know, I maybe my health is poor. When we are weak, he is strong. And in this picture specifically, God says he'll make your feet like hind's feet. Another translation says he'll make your feet like the feet of a deer. This is obviously not a deer. But I want to show this picture because it was one I could find. What that means is, is that a deer and a, actually a mountain goat. Have you ever watched like the, the shows where these goats are climbing like on the side of a hill and you're going, oh my God. Yeah. It's crazy. God designed them so that when their front feet get planted, when their back feet come along, they land within an inch exactly of where the front feet have already been. What does that do? 
it allows them, they can see where they're going, and so then when they place their front feet, it's okay. okay. But they won't slip because they know they've already been there and it's been okay. So these things, when they're at, when a predator is after them, when they're in a place where their life is in danger, think about this in your own situation. When you're in that place, God's giving you the feet to say, I can escape because I can go faster whatever's pursuing me because he's given me this ability. He's going to lead, he's going to guide, he's going to direct you. It's going to allow you to run the race that you have if your life is a race with complete confidence, complete freedom. He'll allow you not to get off track, even though the track may look tough. You know, as, as this picture here, you know, that's a little tough road to hoe. Yeah. But this thing's going to get through that, and that's what God's going to take you. He's going to take you through what looks like impossible and make it be possible. He's going to allow you to escape danger. And then it says he's going to take you if you have your life founded on him, if you have the cornerstone, if you've laid the bricks right, if you're taking the right steps, he says, I'm going to take you to high places. How many of you would like to go from where we are now to a high place? Right? I mean, if you ever get a chance, and I assume some of you have living here, to go up into the tallest point of wherever, even here in Morristown. So last week, um, there's a park that I didn't even know about until we had a birthday party with one of our team members over there. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Park. On top of the hill, you can see all of Morristown. Like you're above the First Baptist steeple. You can see everything up there. When you go to a high place, you can see this wonder and all the things that are around you. God says he wants to take you that way in your spiritual walk. If you, if you take this step and know and have confidence that it's founded on the solid ground, it's founded on, on, the, on the cornerstone, he will take you to high places, places you couldn't go on your own. But now you can go because you're, you're ordering your steps along his way. This scripture that I reference concludes in this way. It said, God provides a broad path for me to walk so my ankles don't give way. So this is my analogy. So I'm out walking in the river with my son-in-law, and I'm looking at where he's going, and, you know, he's pretty athletic and uh, pretty agile and he's going I'm looking like I ain't gonna do that I ain't gonna fall right in the water or whatever you know what I mean because all these spots are like like he's got like size 7 or 8 feet you know and I got 11's and I'm like my foot ain't gonna work the way your foot just worked but God says I'm gonna make that place where you step when you're getting ready to walk out of this place when you're, you're, when you're stepping out I'm going to make it like a wide spot to say, you know what? It's safe. It's okay. It's safe. It's okay. Amen. God wants us to build our situations and look at our situations in a way that says, you know what? He doesn't want us to be living in this place of captivity where we're just bound up. I mean, I would do this too, but you know, some, somebody, somebody would get hurt. Um, it probably me. But he doesn't want that. But he does want us to overcome. We started out, we talked about the mission of ABC, about being overcomers. God wants you to be an overcomer. But to do that, we need to be founded in the right place. We need to have the right foundation. So today I want to give you a challenge. This is a, a short message, but I want to take an opportunity. I want to allow us enough time. Uh, for those of you that wanted to, to be prayed for. But we can today step out of our self-made world. We can step outside of that. As long as we know that that step is going to be okay, it'll be safe, it'll be secure, it's a good foundation. The Bible calls it steps of faith. You know, we run the race wouldn't it be great if we knew that the steps we're going to take, if we're ordered of God, are going to be secure? That the steps we take is going to be okay, even if maybe we can't see the outcome? That we have a sure foundation, that God's on our side, that he's for us, he's not against us. That if we look and we say, you know what, I'm founding my steps on the truth of this word. I'm founding what I take a step in and what I'm stepping out of on truth. Because what ends up landing us here inside of this hoop are lies. Not that something didn't really happen, but that's not who we are. That's not our true identity. 
If I make a mistake, it, I, I, I am not a mistake. I made a mistake. It's not who I am, it's what I did. And I can overcome what I do. The key is, the Bible describes that we have to have a commitment. So let's take a look back just real quick in that verse in Matthew. It says that as long as we base what we're doing on the truth and we're obedient to it. So let's take a look at that again. I don't want to, I don't want to miss this point. This, this is the key to how we're going to step out of this, knowing that if we're going to step on the foundation, that is Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. We're going to build it that way. Everyone who hears the words of mine and puts them into practice, hearing them and knowing them, sowing them into your heart, and then putting them to practice. So if it tells us not to do something, we should try our best not to do it. If it tells us to do something, we ought to try our best to do it. That's the key of us being able to walk outside of here, surround ourselves with people who are going to encourage us and strengthen our walk, and we'll be able to move in that way. So I want to pray for us uh, corporately, and then I want Tracy to come up. And then if you if you would like, I'd like to spend a little time praying for you after I pray corporately. Hopefully it's going to play. It would be great if it would play. If it doesn't, you get the gist. <laughs> prison gates, that we may walk with confidence. Lord God, that we'll step out and we won't sink, Lord, because we've built our foundation on a solid rock. So, Father, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you that you gave us your son, Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that you have made a way where there seems to be no way. I thank you that you order our steps and direct our paths. So, Father, I yield our will to yours today, and I just ask, Lord God, that you would break off those things that keep people captive. Lord God, you would loose the chains, that you would remove the yoke, that you would take the heavy burden away, Lord God, and give and exchange your grace and your mercy. So, Father, I thank you for that. I thank you for that, and I just ask that you touch your people today in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So now I just invite you, if you need to go, you can just disorderly and get things signed. But Tracy and I are going to be up here to uh, to uh, pray with all those who need to be uh, prayed for. And I believe you can be set free from that bondage and you can take that step of faith on a firm foundation.